Hey, Melbourne, tickets to my comedy festival show are on sale now. Loosebeers.com to get your tickets. Pay with Afterpay or Dogecoin if you want. I take everything and regular money too, but whatever. Buy your tickets now. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode something of the 187 of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's uh, uploaded late, you know, late in the night, not late in the day. So don't worry, our suicide pact, it's all good. You turn around. A lot of people right now listening to this must be on their way to the Westgate. Some of you cunts might be on the Westgate refreshing their fucking podcast app. Turn around, go home. We're on time. It's all good. The suicide pact, it's not, it's, I'm serious about it. If I do miss an episode, we're going to have to make some arrangements. But right now, you need to go home, listen to this on the way home. It's all good. There's no need to jump. Um, we are here. It is a bit late. I've had uh, one of those weekends. You ever had like the busiest? I had one of the busiest weeks of this whole fucking year organizing a few things for some secret projects. If you've seen me on Instagram, you see me doing a little bit of hinting. Little bit of here. something big is coming, and I think we can reveal. We can at least talk a little bit about it this week, and it will be revealed probably, hopefully, in full next week. Very excited about it. It is happening. We've been a building. We've been built. Some hammers have been out. There's been a bit of paint has been splashed. Some contractors have been creating, crafting, building, banging, and it's happening. And it will all be revealed very fucking soon. I'm very excited about it. Big partnerships in the work. It's all happening. But the point is, I'm not going to talk about that for an hour because that's boring because it's secret. I've had one of the busiest weeks of my year. Last fucking 18 months, probably one of the busiest weeks. And you know when you you, you have a real busy week and you're like, fuck, this has been crazy. This has been really busy, but it's going to be totally worth it because I'm going to get that weekend. I'm going to get that that weekend where I do absolutely nothing. I haven't booked in anything. I have got no gigs. I haven't organized a fucking thing. All I'm going to do is sit at home, read a book, watch some TV, play some video games, maybe even treat myself to a wank and just do absolutely fucking nothing. Not even probably where the sa- you know when you have one of those weekends where you have such a busy week where you're like, "You know what?" I'm going to treat myself to something special. I'm going to I'm going to wear the same uh, clothes for 2 days. I'm going to sleep in them. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to fucking just stay in it in my own filth. I have a shower, but I'm not getting clothes out because then I have to fucking fold these ones, put them in the dirty washing. That's how lazy I'm going to be. That's how little I have organized on these week. You work so hard during the week, all you want to do is have that fucking specially curated and planned piece of shit 48 hours where you do fuck all. You know those ones where you're like, man, I've been working hard all week, but as soon as the weekend hits, it's going to be worth it because I'm not doing anything. I had one of those working super hard. Monday, Friday, and I thought it's going to be worth it. I need the time off. I'm going insane. I've been doing fucking 18-hour days, waking up, being funny, real talks, YouTube, building secret projects, mergers, acquisitions, uh, hostile takeovers, coups, organizing it all. And then it will all be worth it because I've got nothing on the weekend. And then, and then that Friday hits and you're like, fuck yeah. I've got nothing on. And then you find out girlfriend's family has a baby shower. Fuck! All right. I'll go to that. Whatever. I like them. I didn't want to go anywhere. I have nothing against them. I just wanted to do nothing, but that's okay. I'll go to the baby shower. It'll be a couple hours. No worries. And then you remember that it's also your little brother's birthday. Fuck! Oh, all right. Fine. I'll go to that. Fine, I'll go to his fucking birthday, whatever. And then you find out also that on Saturday night, it's your editor's birthday. Fuck! All right, I'll go to that too. Fine. 
Oh, so fine, that's what my whole fucking weekend is just birthdays and baby showers and driving and doing shit. Fine, we'll do that. And then and then Monday you gotta do more shit. So your weekend's just out. And you love the people. You love well done. You had a baby. Amazing. We should all shower you with praise. Oh cool. You've been born. Another birthday. Well done. Oh great. Another second other birthday. Amazing. Great. You love all these people, but you but you really do hate them a little bit for seemingly conspiring to be all born and have babies in the same time period just to fucking ruin your weekend you know no i had to i had to i have had a great weekend but fuck i am exhausted you know because i've been really needing a day off and just not finding one you know what you know you like one of those like fucking six week periods where you're like oh i, I need to sleep or i'm gonna die and i don't really sleep because i have such bad sleep apnea that i just uh come into this weird state of unconsciousness but not resting you know just like fucking oh i'm gonna close my eyes and and get strangled by my own tongue for for maybe six hours uh, we, we, during which I will wake up frequently and then uh, I will fucking take a photo of myself and people go, why do you look like a corpse? And I'll go, well, because I kind of am one, you know, like I'm every time I go to sleep, I'm hovering between the realm of life and death. <laughs> um, this buzz pod thing that I've, that I got, it's like this sleep apnea thing where, if I'm on my back, it starts to vibrate, wakes me up, so I roll over. It's been working great, really, really great until, right? Really great until. So I love to read. What I like to do is I like to turn my phone off and I put it in a different room. So there's no chance of me fucking checking it. No chance. Because that's what you have to do. Because you know you're an addict, aren't you? If, you're a, if you are like under 30, you're addicted to your phone and you know you are, but you can't help yourself. I recommend having the only charger in your house, in a room that's inconvenient to go to. So that if your phone's low on battery, you got to chuck it in the, in the, in the room. There's nothing you can do. And then when you go to bed, if you want to wake up to a charged phone in the morning, so you can get your fucking morning doom scroll in, you need to Put it in a different room. And then the only thing you have to do in your bedroom is sleep and fuck. That's it. Sleep and fuck. That's it. Sorry to all the people who live by themselves, but my bedroom is for sleeping and fucking and that's it. No, no other activities. If you start doing shit in your bedroom, it's over. You start fucking watching Netflix in there on your laptop. No way. I started doing that. It started to ruin my life. I, I put, Now there's no technology in the bedroom. You know why? Because it's for sleeping and fucking and that's it. If you come anywhere near my bedroom, guess what? You, you better be tired because if you're not tired, you're getting fucked. That goes for anyone. You know, anyone, you come anywhere near my bedroom, it's like if you're not if you're not in pajamas, you're getting fucked. That's it. It's for sleeping and fucking and 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 those orders can reverse. Sometimes it's for fucking and then sleeping. Sometimes it'll be a little bit of sleep and wake up, do some fucking, and go back to sleep. That's it. That's the only thing that I want to be doing in my bedroom is sleeping and fucking. I don't even change in there. For some reason my clothes are in my office. I get paranoid. That's where I stream. Every, t every time I get changed, I check the camera three times. One of these days, you know, if you're if you're a fucking one of those people that have notifications on every time I stream, maybe one day you'll just fucking open it up and it'll be my balls. And I'll be like, well, he's not fucking. It's like, of course not. He's not in the bedroom. He's changing. Because everyone, everyone knows that my bedroom is for two things only, sleeping and fucking, and a little bit of reading. Actually, a lot of reading. Actually, probably as much reading as there is sleeping because I do know sleeping, as we've learned. Anyway, so in between the, the, the fucking and the sleeping, I've been got this buzz pod thing that straps to my chest. I got my own one that doesn't smell like any, like 600 other dudes, thank God. Got my own one, uh, and... Unfortunately, jazz. What my because I read right on my back, and I also fuck on my back. Uh, but I read on my back, and it was really annoying. It would vibrate, and then I couldn't really read. So I was like, oh, "Fuck!" And then jazz was like, "Oh, just flip it around when you're reading, and then when you go to sleep, flip it back." Now that was great, and that is great for conscious Lewis 
to know. What you really don't want to know, who you really don't want to know that is Sleep Lewis. And he's a menace because he is constantly fighting for his life until he gets that new chin. And when he does, it's over for you. And then there will be, you know, there'll be heaps of sleeping, but there'll be even more fucking. All right. And, 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 you, and everyone who is female will be bashing on the windows. I'll have to, I'll have to put up signs that says from fucking midnight to 7 a.m. strictly sleep hours. And, and there'll still be a line of people rocking up because word of mouth will just have to spread uh, for, for all of your girlfriends to know that uh, I only sleep between the hours of midnight and 7 a.m. All other times, it's fuck, fuck city in the bedroom. But between midnight and 7 a.m., I do need to get my Z's, my beauty sleep. Um, so Sleep Lewis has also worked out that if I'm on my back and then the thing starts to vibrate, all I need to do is just flip it over. And I have been doing that pretty much every fucking night unconsciously. I will wake up in in at, like in the middle of the night, like struggling to breathe. And I'll go, why the fuck isn't this thing working? And I will have found out that I flipped it. And, and what I don't understand is that's completely unconscious. I don't want to do that. I just do it. I don't understand how the fuck... I have the ability to like wake up and flip the buzz pod so that it stops vibrating so that I can go back to choking on my tongue and not sleeping. I don't understand how I can do that, but I cannot like roll off my back onto my side. Why can't I do that? Why can I fucking stop myself from getting notified when I'm struggling to breathe I can stop that from happening, but I cannot roll from my back to my side. It's not my decision. I tell myself in my head, all right, don't flip the thing and don't sleep on your back. I do the opposite. And then and then I wake up and Jazz is like, how did you sleep? And I go, oh, well, I was unconscious, but I feel like death, you know? That's why I didn't get any fucking videos done this week, doing all this other stuff and not sleeping. Um, but man, we had a great time at Keelan's birthday. Uh... I, it was one of those rare occasions, very rare, once in a blue moon, once in a once in a green moon, which you see even less, uh, where I had fun. Some something crazy happened, guys. I went out at night in the city to a bar and then a club, and I enjoyed both of them. That's crazy. So uh, that's you know what. That's never happened before. Well, it has. You know what? Here's the, here's the thing. I enjoy, I genuinely enjoy going out with my friends. But most of the time, I thoroughly enjoy it for 30 minutes only. You know, I'm one of those people where I'm such an introverted cunt where I love my friends dearly for 30 minutes. Like, and that's, it, I don't have annoying friends. I've got lovely friends. Luke Kidgel, my brother, Keelan, Jasmine. But I love them exclusively and intensely for 30 minutes. And that's better than a lot of people. Some, some women only get about 30 seconds. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like I go out. And it's the fucking noise and it's everyone and it's cunts coming up to me and saying hi, which I love, by the way. And I'll never, I'll never complain about that, but I'm about to complain about it. No, no, I, it's just a lot. You know what I mean? Like, it's just everyone talking to me and then the noise and then all this kind of stuff. And I'm sober and I just go, this is amazing for 30 minutes. And then I start to go, well, <sighs> that's enough of that, you know? I can hang out with two people for hours. If there's eight and music, it's half an hour. That's how, that's how, for some reason, that's how my brain works. But last Saturday night was, for some reason, different. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, went to the bar, had a bit of fun, went to, and this is crazy because I've never done this before in my life, and this might blow a few of your minds. Well, I went to a karaoke bar and I've never been to one. And I almost, when everyone decided they were going to go to karaoke, 
my brain went, time to go. It's time to leave. But then another part of my brain went, hey, man, sometimes you need to do things that you know you're going to aggressively dislike because then you come back with a funny bit for your shows, which, by the way, are on sale now, loosespears.com. I forgot to say, buy them now. Saturday show just sold out. First Friday, looking close. That'll be the next to go. So I would like to move all of our efforts to selling out that first Friday show. I think there's uh, 40 left, so grab them because they'll be fucking gone. Um, I was like, it's time to go, mate. You're going to hate this. But I have another shocking confession to make. Loved it. Loved karaoke. However, there is some weird, weird cunts at karaoke. There are some, there are like, Groups of friends that are there to do karaoke and sing their silly songs terribly and have a bit of fun uh, together as friends. And then there was like, I, I think there was like four people there by themselves. Now, I've been a big supporter of going to shit by yourself. I really have. I've 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 stayed with the, the solo soldiers uh for years, I've been a big advocate of going to things by yourself. Come to my show. If you can't figure out, if you can't find any, I mean, come with friends because Lord knows they'll love it. You don't have to be a fan of me to enjoy my stand up. I'm fucking great. All right. I'll, I'll say it right now. I've been, I've been performing to fucking mums and dads this whole year at the comics lounge and fucking young people at Rochester hotel, smashing, crushing. I'm the king. I'm the best. Even if you're not a fan, you'll love me. But if you can't find people to bring, come by yourself too. Don't feel embarrassed. I'm not going to trash you. I might, but I'm not going to trash you. But it's a pop- it's a possibility if you're in the front row. But I won't, but it, I might. It depends where you're sitting and what you're wearing. We'll see. It's a great night and it's all said with love. I won't and, and but until you buy the ticket and then it's a possibility. You know what I mean? So come, enjoy the show. I've been a big advocate of seeing things by yourself. Going to movies by yourself, amazing. Going to fucking comic book conventions or video or or whatever the fuck niche interest conventions by yourself, great. Sexpo by yourself, probably the norm. You know, that's not really something you... Is that a thing you do with friends? I don't... That's not something you take your mum to, is it? Your girlfriend? I don't know about that. Strip club? Yeah, I guess, but... I don't know what's what's more weird, by yourself or with friends. I don't know. I haven't done either. I can't make a judgment on that. But I imagine, you know what? Going by yourself, cool. Going by yourself frequently to the point where you keep coming home smelling like glitter, but you uh, have never fucking seen a girl or touched a woman that you haven't paid is sad. Uh, however, going back to my original point, I've been a huge advocate of going to shit by yourself. Going for a walk in the city, going to stores, shopping. Getting food, going to a cafe by yourself, love it. Guys, I've never been the most consistent cunt on the planet and I'm happy to go back on my word and I'm here to say, this might blow your minds, guys, I've finally found the thing that if you go by yourself, you're a weird cunt and it's karaoke. If you go to karaoke by yourself, you're a weird cunt. And I'm going to tell you why. If you like singing, you're not weird. If you like performing in front of people, you're not weird. If you go to karaoke by yourself, you're ruining everyone else's night. And I'm going to tell you why. There were four cunts there by themselves for karaoke. And because karaoke is such a social thing. It's a thing where you go as a group and you all pick your favorite songs and you sing them together and you sing them at your friendship groups and you sing them at other friendship groups and it is very, it's a very cohesive thing. We all suck at singing, but we're all a little bit fucking drunk other than me uh, and we're all having fun. You're there by yourself. I don't know. I don't know what it was about all of the people that were there by themselves. There were four cunts that were there by themselves, and and they just attach themselves to other groups. That's probably the biggest difference. If you go to something by yourself and you see a group that are there with, as a group, 
you, don't, leave them alone. You know what I mean? Don't bring them down. Why do you have to do that? Some cunt comes over and finds out it's fucking... Starts yelling in my ear. He's not a fan. I don't know, which is fine. But I don't know who he is. Starts talking to me. I'm still on the fence about COVID. I don't know if this is a good thing. But he's yelling in my ear, spitting on my face. I'm like, well, I've got it now. Thanks. Thank you. I fuck. That's one thing that I did not miss about bars was strangers yelling in your ear and spitting on your face. Gotta feel sorry for women. Really feel for chicks out there that have to deal with that. Cause I got, I got spoken to, to by one guy who kept yelling in my ear. He was there by himself, just spitting all over my face and fuck. It was strange. And then you, you be nice to these people cause you don't want to be rude, but then they're like, ah, oh, finally, this is what I was looking for an accepting group. And you realize why every other fucking group in the karaoke bar has been keeping these freaks at arm le- arm's length because the moment you show them any part, any, fucking semblance of social compassion which is the right thing to do but fuck it sucked they start attaching themselves to your group you ever see a whale that are like followed around by those little fish that like eat the food that gets stuck in their teeth that's what these people were doing they're like social leeches they they come to fucking karaoke by themselves and they just try and scoop up any social interaction they can from your group even when you're celebrating someone else's birthday he goes and fucking buys Keelan a drink. Keelan's like, oh, great. Now I have to fucking drink it. Who's this? I got to say thanks. Strange energy sits and attaches themselves at the head of our table. No one knows who the cunt, who this cunt is. He starts asking me if I play basketball. I'm about to fucking blow my brains out. Fuck. Then there was another guy that was clearly there just to sing well. And I have to say, If you go to karaoke to sing well, loser. Because what that means is you are good enough at singing to be better than everyone else in the karaoke bar and that much of a fucking loser to feel the need to flaunt that in front of a bunch of drunk strangers. But... You're not good enough to sing in any other avenue of singing. You're not good enough for a choir. You're never going to make it in a fucking uh, musical. You're not even good enough for cabaret. Fuck, you're not even good enough for burlesque. So you have to come by yourself to a karaoke bar where everyone else is just picking bangers that we all know that the average person can fucking kind of keep up with and mumble along and sing poorly, but it's fine. And then you got to come in. One cunt picked an Elton John singing song and I heard vibrato leave. If you go to a karaoke bar by yourself to sing a fucking Elton John song well, Go home. Ruining it. Not destroyed the vibe. I, as soon as I heard that cunt doing a bit of vibrato, I started booing, which is really rude, but also very funny to boo the only good singer. This guy gets up and starts singing well. Everyone in our friendship group starts to boo, which, yes, before you start writing your comments, is bullying but some people need that you know like we i think that there needs to be a healthy amount of bullying you know what i mean bullying keeps us in check not sustained not harassment not going back and singling out one person and doing it again and again and again that's terrible and i've never done that but every now and then some cunt picks an Elton John song at a karaoke bar that they've attended by themselves and haven't really had any alcohol and are there to try and, for some reason, impress everyone else with their, I don't know, six to seven out of ten on a good day singing, that guy needs to be bullied a little bit just to keep it in check. Just just so he knows that that's a lame thing to do that makes everyone else's night worse. 
On the same token, there was a girl that was really, really drunk and she was touching every guy. Like she was so drunk that if you did anything, it's time for prison, right? And those girls are at every nightclub where everyone sees them and every guy goes, I could, but I would go to prison and I would deserve that. And every other guy sees the messy girl and we all have the fucking ESP that says, if you touch her, you're a rapist. And that's how it should be. But also there is rarely, not as often, there's always a messy girl that's that some that someone could take advantage of, but it but it shouldn't ever happen. And rarely there is one guy. And there was that guy there today, or like the other night. And guess who got bullied by me? That guy. Because he deserved it. Now, if I didn't bully the guy, that something might have happened to that girl that maybe she wouldn't have been okay with. And that's what I'm talking about. Is sometimes when a guy gets on stage and sings an Elton John song at a karaoke night by himself with vibrato, you have to boo him because it's funny and his ego needs to be checked. On the same token, that type of energy needs to be directed to the really desperate incel that tries to take advantage of the girl who's just up for it with anyone because she's had too many drinks and her friends left her. That guy needs to be called a pathetic loser to his face. And, and that really keeps the world in check. And if I didn't do that, maybe she would end up with him. I saved her life. Sometimes bullying is good. Sometimes you have to boo the guy who's singing with vibrato because it's funny. Sometimes you have to look at the guy who's following around the too drunk girl and say, are you really following her around? And he goes, oh, well, uh, you know, she seems, and I go, she seems drunk and you seem like a pathetic loser. And then they go, uh, I am being very rapey. I think I'll leave the bar because this giant man is scary. And that's how the world should work is there needs to be a healthy amount of bullying because I did two great things there. I saved this woman's night and her dignity and stopped them from getting taken advantage of by that guy. And I stopped, more importantly, this dude from singing Elton John songs with vibrato at a karaoke night by themselves. I stopped that from happening ever again because eight of us booed. And that is mean, yes, but also it's funny. And if I didn't have the confidence to do that to a stranger, maybe I wouldn't have saved this girl's life. So even if you think I'm a cunt, guess what? I'm also a hero. <laughs> no, that's not heroic shit. That is the bare minimum. Fuck, that pisses me off seeing like desperate dude. Because there, there always is one way too messy girl that got either abandoned or lost and separated from her group of friends. And every guy can identify that girl and go, I could if I wanted to, but that should be jail time. And if most dudes, I'd say 99% of the time when you see that messy girl, most dudes are like, nah, that's wrong. But every now and then there is that one little rat that one little fucking scavenger that's just like, please, I need a crumb, anything. And that guy was there. There's this chick and she's gone and she's by herself and she's off her face. And she was like having a great time dancing around, but she fucking grabs. By the way, I love that what I'm about to describe in this scenario, I'm painting this woman like uh, a victim. But if a man was doing this, they would be an abuser. She's going around, she's really drunk, and she's fucking touching Luke, and then he's like, whoa. Here's the thing. When a really paralytic drunk chick comes up and starts touching you or trying to dance on you, the correct response is to act like the police 
just rolled up and pulled their guns on you. Hands up! Whoa, whoa, he- whoa. That's what you should do is when a chick is super far gone and starts hitting on you in a way she definitely wouldn't if she had, I don't know, 15 less uh, wet pussy shots. You need to act like the FBI just pulled up on your house and your whole house has been swatted and they th- and they think you're holding a hostage, but they got the wrong address. You need to go hands up. Whoa, hands where I can see him. I'm not touching anything. It's not, no ways. Take five steps back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. And that's what everyone was doing. She fucking goes up and grabs Luke. And then later on, I'm on the dance floor dancing with Jazz, by the way. She comes in between us, starts rubbing her ass on me. I put my hands straight up in the air. Whoa, whoa. 10 steps back. Mainly because I don't want to go to prison, but also I don't want to get bashed by Jasmine. She's a strong woman. Um, and she's, you know, that girl starts doing that to all these guys and all the guys are like, nah, everyone knows. Very small place. Everyone knows. That's the girl who's had too much and we're going to let her have her dance and then she's going to go home and it's all good. And then there was one little fucking scummy cockroach who was there also by himself, like real fucking scummy predator vibes. And that guy's like following her. You see those guys that like follow and prey on the fucking way too drunk bitch. Real scummy shit. So that's when I came in and go, hey, man, she's had a lot, huh? Do you know her? Because, you know, if it was his girlfriend, cool, fine. They were both, you know, whatever. He has to look after her. I was like, hey, man, do you know her? He goes, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I was like, you don't know her, do you? He goes, nah. They go, she's had a lot, huh? He goes, yeah. I said, you look pathetic following her around like that. He's like, oh. I said, yeah, yuck. (laughs) And there is nothing more degrading than looking at a guy calling them pathetic and then they go not know what to say and then you go yuck and that's I uh, couldn't be any clearer than that is you just look at a dude and that's what that's what girls are great at doing and what guys don't really know what to do because you know they're worried about fights I don't have to worry about fights because I'm a fucking giant that that just seems to for whatever reason dispel any thoughts of even doing it like some primal lizard brain shit big man killed me should not fight you know not that i would win any fight that would be started with me for some reason it's just never something i've had to worry about with most dudes so i can kind of go eh nah and that'll settle it and girls are great at doing that is a girl because I had that early on when I, you know, you try and hit on a girl and and then she'll look at you with just a look of, you fucking wish, you know? Like, you wish, cunt. Girls are great at that. Or when there's one really drunk girl and there's, like, four friends who are not on that level but they're looking after her and then some guy will walk up to the real drunk one and a girl will, like, stand in between them and give them a look like, you fucking disgusting disgusting piece of trash. I wouldn't even piss on you if you were on fire, you animal. (laughs) And they can say all of that in about half a second with a look, a face. Girls can do that. You fuck. And you just get all of that into your brain. You go, man, I'm a grub. Girls are great at that. And guys don't really know how to do handle dudes like that. And what you got to do, is you just got to go, hey, man, do you know her? Because you got to establish that. If it's a girlfriend, it's different. Okay, cool, whatever. They're obviously consenting and he has to look after her. But if it doesn't look like that, all you have to do is go up to them and go, hey, guys, how you going? And then she'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. And you're like, yeah. And you're like, how do you guys know each other? And then you look at her. Because if he lies, whatever, you look at her and if she'll go, um, uh, we met, and he'll go, oh, we, we you know, we know from uh, school and he's lying. You look at her and she'll go, oh, um, uh, yeah. and then, and then you just go, ah, oh, cool. Hey, she's real drunk. Yeah. And then he goes, yeah. And then you go, is that right? 
what you're doing? And then they'll go, uh, no. And you go, yeah, that's pretty yuck, huh? And then they'll go, uh, and you go, yuck. You should go somewhere else. And then they do. I've done it, has doesn't happen all the time. I'm not the fucking protector of women, defender of pussy, right? But it's important for men to do because if we don't do it and there's no fucking women around to protect their mates, bad things happen. That's my little two cents is it's not, it's pretty easy to fucking spot shady, weird, creepy behavior and you don't have to be a hero. You don't have to fight. You just have to fucking go, hey, man, yuck. And that usually works because there's one thing that these fucking scummy little rats that, like, follow vulnerable chicks around for a crumb of pussy, there's one thing that they fear more than anything else, and that's just the absolute disgust of other people in the club, of getting basically getting caught. Because there's, like... You know, there's, like, monsters that are, like, fucking, you know, violent sex offenders. They're a different breed. They're not in a fucking club. They're following chicks home, and that's scary and terrible. But there's, like, there's like little scummy rats that are waiting for the opportunity. They don't, they're not planning it. They're not out there. But if they see it, they will pounce. And those guys are fucking bitches. And they're very easy to just shame quite easily go, ugh, yuck. And that usually fucking sorts it out. I only have to do it a couple of times, but, you know, if all dudes do that, that's a good thing. That's what I think anyway. Um, All right. I have one more story about an incredibly drunk chick that's very funny, actually, after the Caribou Bar. But first, I want to talk about Manscaped. Manscaped.com, guys, grab yourself a fucking razor. Shave your pubes. Get yourself looking nice. Would you fucking manscape, would you? Huh? Makes it look bigger. Makes it look cleaner. Smells a bit nicer. Less sweaty. It's great. It's summer here in Australia. Treat yourself to some trim nut hair. That's what I think. I mean, don't keep the nut hair. I'm saying that 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 make your nuts look nice. Do with... You know what? Do with it. Whatever you do with the hair, that's none of my business. The point is manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Because they support the show and the comedy, and that's how you can support me and trim your nuts. You want to fucking do? You want to? Hey, shave your pussy. You know what? I'm gonna do to you what I did to that fucking little rat at the club. Hey man, you haven't shaved your pubes for like 18 months, or since you got them? Doesn't that? Isn't that a bit gross? Don't you think? Yuck. You really, when, you, when you're checking a guy who's like following around a vulnerable girl, you really need to hit the yuck. Because if you go, that's a bit yuck, don't you think? That's not, you need to go, yuck. You need to go, yuck. You got to open the mouth. You got to fucking really hit that. It's a real, you got to exhale with the CK and you got to really go deep with the U. You got to go, yuck. It's more like a yuck. It's like a fucking it's like a really fish hook is what you got to do with your mouth. It's got to go back and then forwards. It's got to go down, back, and then forward with a point, and you hit him with the CK. That's that's the real stab. That's the end of the fish hook. You got to you got to you got to look at him and you got to go. You got to leave a little pause and you got to go. Oh, that's a bit weird, don't you think? Like follow that. That's not that's that's not on, is it? That's a bit pathetic, huh? And they go, Whoa, and you go, yeah, yuck. <laughs> you look at right in the face. You go, hey, hey, man. You preying on drunk chicks in a nightclub? Girls that are way too drunk? Ha. Huh. Yuck. <laughs> and 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 that works every time. Yuck. But you know what's what's not yuck? Your balls after using the lawnmower 3.0. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS. 20% off and free shipping. Seriously good stuff. I use it. I recommend it. Haven't cut my nuts for fucking since I got this thing. I threw my old one out because it it hurt me. And you know what? I'm kind of getting over over the PTSD of having cut nut syndrome. It's when I use the old old razor, it would happen every time I got too close. It would go, ah, little fucking nip. 
not wouldn't cut me, but every now and then it'd give me a real big pinch. And then one time it gave me a cut and I was like, fuck. And I could never get over it hurt so much. Manscaped has never done that to me, but I still have the memory, the trauma of the old razor that I use. And I'm every time I get close, I start fucking going, oh, it's going to hurt me. Ah. You ever see an abused dog on YouTube? Like, like accepting a pat, you know, it's like, oh, this is nice, but I know he's going to fucking hit me. And there's no way to explain to the dog. It's like, no, I would never do that. I know a, th- a guy that looked like me did that, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to do that. That's like what I want to say to my balls. I'm like, look, I know that a razor that looks like this razor did that to you, but this razor is never going to do that to you. But my balls go, I can't understand you, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm full of cum. No brains in here, just cum. So manscaped.com, use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. It supports the show. And I think that might be my, might be my final read. So uh, they decide whether or not they're going to come back based on your usage of the code. So if you want to get one, get it now. Um, so, yeah, we leave after karaoke. They all start going to the strip club. So me and Jazz are like, all right, we're fucking out. It's like 2 a.m. now. Oh, no, 1.30. And we go to get some food. We go to get dumplings in Chinatown before we leave. And uh, Jazz and I are in there. We're waiting. And then this other really even more drunk chick comes in by herself. Real pretty girl as well, right? Which is just a danger. She comes in. She's super. Actually, no, she was already in there on a chair. And then she got up to collect her order. And I thought she was leaving. I thought she had friends outside. And then I took her chair. Uh, And then she comes back and she sees that I'm sitting in the chair and she tries to sit somewhere else. That was like the, the, the fucking condiment table. Like it was where you got your fucking sporks and your soy sauce fish. And it was not a table. It was like, uh, it was there uh, for just communal grab a fork on the way out. And she tried to sit at it. She was that drunk. And the guy's like, no, no, you have to leave. You have to leave. Uh, and she's like, oh, but I fucking you. And then I, he looks around, there's no chairs. And then he's like, you have to leave, get out. And I'm like, oh, she's by herself. All right. She needs to fucking sober up. I'm going to leave as soon as I get my food. I stand up and you go, you can sit here. And she's like, and then sits down and starts eating. And I was like, well, that wasn't English. She gave it a go, but it wasn't English. Good on it. Right. And then uh, we're sitting there and it's taking ages. She's eating. She, despite going to the condiment table, didn't pick up any fucking forks or anything. She starts eating noodles with her hands. And I was like, well, that's precious, isn't it? You ever see a, a real drunk, like a girl that's had way too much? They're like toddlers, you know? Men that have had way too much, they're more like 12-year-olds who are going through puberty and they start going, I would like to fuck or fight. Or both, right? Uh, women that get way too drunk, they they revert to like four years old. They can barely walk. English is gone. And the only motor skills they have is, f- is hand-to-mouth food. Like they can't do anything else. Guys can fight when they're drunk. Women can only eat. I've never seen a woman really, really, really drunk do anything other than eat and fall over, which is remarkably like a fucking five-year-old toddler. Guys can fight uh, and uh, and yell. That's kind of it. And they're like more like 12, you know, 13-year-olds going through puberty. Oh, I reckon I could jump off that. That's what guys do is they, they revert to 12 years old when they're figuring out the limits of their bodies and like what's the most dangerous thing I could do right now that'll impress my friends is it jumping off this thing without hurting myself or is it having a punch on with that guy let's find out maybe both right but women turn into toddlers uh, and that's she was at that that stage so we're sitting next to her like ignoring her while she eats and Jazz is like ah this is kind of funny and then uh, she leans over to me. She puts her hand on my shoulder and she goes, she whispers in my ear. She goes, and I went, what? And she goes, I need some vinegar. <laughs> and then she fucking stands up. She goes, watch my stuff. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And then she gets vinegar and then she almost falls over on the way back and sits down. And then me and Jazz look at each other and, and, and we go, <sighs> She's our problem now, poor girl. She's our problem because, uh, and then and then, I'm like, I go, are you by, are you with your friends? She goes, I don't, 
I don't know where they are. And we were like, ah, okay, uh, either we get her home or someone's taken her home. It was like that. And she was a real pretty girl as well. So we were like, ah, yeah, let's fucking look after her. So she, we wait, we get her food. She finishes eating by the time we get her food. So we kind of leave together. And that's when we truly realize we're like, hey, we're, we're like, oh, we'll help you get back to your friends. And she goes, oh, they left. They went home. And we're like, oh, all right, fuck. Let's get you in an Uber. Uh, and she pulls out her phone and she can't even fucking find the Uber app. So Jazz takes her phone, starts booking her shit, uh, and then we wait with her and she has no idea where she is. She thinks, I'm pretty sure, that a, a threesome was about to happen. She's like, where are we going? What's got? Where are we? What's your name? You're tall. You guys are both but tall. You have red hair. It's nice. And then she would walk away uh, onto the road, and and I'd grab her and go, no, no, not on the road, on the sidewalk. We're waiting for an Uber. She goes, ah, oh, yeah. Where are we go? Are we going somewhere? Else? Are we going to Billboard? We're like, no, no, no. You just came out from Billboard. Remember, they 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 kicked you out. She's like, ha, ha, yeah, I'm not allowed in again tonight. We're, but should we go to Billboard? We're like, no, no, no. Remember, she's like, yeah, I'm hungry. You've already had food. Yeah. Like that drunk. So we get her on a park bench and then she just immediately falls asleep on my girl's shoulder. And uh, Jazz is like, because <sighs> this is the second fucking drunk chick. I feel, I'm feeling like a, a fucking super simp at this point. But it is the right thing to do. So anyway, Uber cancels on her. We help her fucking. Jazz is like, Jazz literally on her phone disputes we went above and beyond for this bitch. She'll never remember us ever again. She, she'll she have ne- no idea who we are ever again. It's gone from... She won't even know how she got home. She was that gone, right? So Jazz is like cancelling her... Uh, uh, disputing her cancellation fee because the guy didn't rock up. That's how well done we did by this girl. We even made sure that she didn't get a cancellation fee. Then we jump over to Dee Dee because she's like... Uber bad. DD has DD safer for women. So we're like, okay, cool. That is one thing that we need for this bitch. She's getting an Uber by herself. We want the guy that's at least ticked the boxes that says I've I'm I don't feel like raping today, right? Whatever the fuck that training is. I don't know what DD does with the training. When I hear that like a ride sharing service has done fucking uh, safety training for women, what I hear is they've done they made them watch like a three minute video that says, hey. Did you know that rape is bad? And then the guy that just wants a job is just like, yes, it's f- whatever. Or, or it's just like, it has it on mute. Like when Luke and I did our um, our guidelines training with radio that, that told us all of the things that we were allowed to say on radio and not allowed to say on radio and all of the journalistic standards and all of the ethics to do with broadcasting. I That shit was on mute, brother. I don't know. I, don't, I, I probably said 10 things I wasn't allowed to say, but we fucking clicked through that shit because you couldn't skip any of the video. So that, you know, turn the volume down, read a book, wait till the woman starts, stop speaking, hit yes, answer the multiple choice, get it wrong, have a few more cracks at it, immediately forget it, move on to the next stage. I imagine that's what Dee Dee's fucking anti-sexual assault training is like uh, as well. But whatever, she was like, I don't want to save her. So we use that one. And we jump on Dee Dee, we book her a fucking thing. And then finally, this. by the way, this is, I've skimmed over a lot. This went for maybe 50 minutes. My dumplings are cold. I was like, man, why do I have to be a good person? It would save me so much time to just let this woman get scooped up by a predator. And I'm going to be honest here with you guys. I would never let that happen. But you're, I'm lying to myself if I haven't thought, fuck, this would be easier. You know, like, it's and, and that is an acknowledgement of reality. It's like, fuck, how many times where, where how many times have you had the opportunity to do the right thing and not thought, ah, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I wish I was a bad person. I think that's good, you know? To, to really be honest with that is no one, rarely does anyone relish the opportunity to help a stranger, you know? Like you see some fucking old lady drop her cans and you're going somewhere and you're like, oh, fuck, I gotta, I gotta, I'm a nice, I'm not a bad person. You know, how good would it be if you were just a cunt? Like if I looked at that girl and was like, oh, well, someone's taking her home tonight. I want to watch American Gods on Amazon Prime. Fuck her. But I'm not. So 
We sit with this chick for like 50 minutes on the park bench while she starts going, I need to do a little billboard. Where's my friend? You you have red hair. You're very tall. I like your necklace, right? Sitting with that. She was lovely. Um, <clears throat> and then the Uber pulls up and she 100% thinks she's going home with us. <laughs> like she is like, Oh, wait, let's get it. And then I, I fucking, she goes, all right, here's our car. And Jazz is trying to go, no, this is going to your house. She's like, yeah, and we, and you're coming too. And then I just gave up. I was like, yep, let's go. And then we, we grab her and by the hand. And then I open up the back seat of the Uber and then I help her in the car. And then she gets in and I had to lift her legs and put it in the back. And she's like, all right, thank you. And then she moves over so that I can get in the car. She goes, come on, guys, let's go. We're going to go kick ons. And I was like, yeah, we are. And then I shut the door and then I open up the passenger side of the Uber. She's like, come on, let's go. What can do you can I can I play my can I listen to 21 pilots? And then I look at the guy and I was like, she needs to go home. Make sure she goes in her house. And he's a like, OK, boss. And and then I was like, bye. And she goes, what? And then I shut the door and she went home safe. And that's two good deeds I did. And I will never do anything nice for anyone else for months. That's my promise to you is uh, I did two nice things. And that's really given me the license to be a cunt for six more months on the internet. That's my thing. I'll be I'll be an asshole to strangers on the internet. In real life, I'm a little softy, and I'll make sure and I'll make sure you get home safe. Um, and then Jazz looks at me and goes, "Man, she is lucky she bumped into us." And I was like, "Oh yeah, because fucking Hannibal Lecter could have taken that bitch home." And he's like, "I'm gonna cook you and eat you." She would have gone, <laughs> "Should you we use paprika?" Should we go IGA and get some good seasoning first? Like, like some drunk chicks, when they get that drunk, they're just like, who wants to eat me alive? Woo! I'll help you pick a good recipe. And you're like, fuck. So that's that's where, where I'm going to leave this episode, guys. It, on a positive note is if you see a chick who's paralytic and alone, Help her get home because if not, someone else will help themselves and that's bad. Uh, look out for each other. It's a nice thing to do. Even if it means you have to eat cold dumplings on the way home, at least you get a funny story. And and you know what I would I, I what Jazz and I wished we had done is, because we had a phone, is just taking a video going, hey, M, was it what her first name started with? Hey, M. We made sure you got home safe. You probably don't remember us, but yeah. And then fucking film her just eating rice with her fingers and leaving a big mess. That would have been great, but uh, that didn't happen. All right. I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you want to send an email to the podcast, I didn't get time to do it. Uh, miscellaneous bit of the end. Worst part of the podcast. If you need some life advice, if you have a story, uh, were you one of these drunk people? Have you helped a drunk person? I'd love to hear it. Tell me a story. If you need some life advice, email it through to podcast at lewspears.com. And if this amount of Spear Sundays was, was not enough for you, Jump on Patreon. There'll be uh, an extra spearhead supplement for you going up tomorrow. Uh, and uh, you get a little bit of extra goodness there. And you can join the Discord and the community and get early access to everything I do and really support the fucking movement that we have going on here of real fucking comedy. Um, speaking of real, first month of Real Talk, two and a half million views. The experiment is working, blasting. And I uh, can't wait to do more. Instagram's popping. TikTok's going crazy. Uh, millions of views in the first month of something that I've never seen done before. Uh, and so it's really cool to see it working. Thank you to everyone who's like sharing it, sending it to their friends, putting it on their stories, chucking it in the group chat, DMing it to a friend or a family member. That's how we really grow. That's how we spread the word. I'm trying to make these really relatable and shareable and bite-sized Spears comedy to kind of get new people into what I'm doing, maybe onto this podcast or onto my main channel. Uh, that's what it's designed to be. So thank you to everyone who's sharing it, uh, putting on their stories. It really, really does help. I can see the difference between stuff that gets shared versus stuff that gets shared less. It's crazy different. So thank you 
Uh, fuck you. I will talk to you next Sunday or tomorrow if you join on Patreon right now. Loosebiz.com. I'll see you in Melbourne. Shows are selling out. I cannot fucking wait. I crushed my last two gigs. So I'm getting back in peak form and I want to see you at the shows. Loosebeers.com. Have a shit one and I'll talk to you next Sunday.